Welcome back to another exciting season of Who's Your Caddy? I am your hostess, Kelly Singh, and I will be joined by the amazing Adam Hallis, Mr. Hallis, on the app formerly known as Twitter, right after the music. Adam. Hey. We're back. Yay. We are. It's been a few months. It has been a few months. I I like how last year we were so go get them and we did the whole like fall swing and all of that turned a rock around season and then we're like, you know what? This year, we need a little breaky break, and we'll come back when it's official. Yeah, we didn't do last week, which was the Century Tournament of Champions, right. which was a no-cut, 60-person uh, field. So it's kind of like a little, little dip your toes in the water for the PGA season. Um, but most of, the, most of the guys are coming back now. Most of them are coming back. Today, I drafted my FSGA Champions League. I got yeah. to stay in the Champions League this year, which is exciting because if you lose, you get relegated. So still in it this year. And um, it was really exciting to make those lineups. But then after I was done, I went to go look and I had two people who are not playing in the Sony. So I had to quickly make some <laughs> switches already. <laughs> but that's how it goes. Yeah. You know? This is going to be, I think, a really good tournament. There are a lot of really exciting names that are coming to play in this tournament. Um and there are our old standards that are going to be playing in this tournament, which actually I feel like this course suits some of the older gentlemen in the crowd uh, somewhat years, at least years gone by. It has kind of proven to be that way. Stuart Sink, Matt Kuchar, like those. Yeah. Kind of I mean, it, it, and it helps that it's in Hawaii. Right. So yeah. if you're if you're going to ease yourself into the the travel, the worry travelsome of PGA Tour, Hawaii is a good place to start. Um, it's not a very long course. You don't have to worry about hitting the fairways. The rough is average length. Really, the only thing you got to worry about is like getting getting onto the green and then making your making your putts. Okay. And I think that's what Chris Kirk did last last week was. He made it had to be over seventy five percent of his three to five foot putts, and then Scotty Shuffler only made sixty five percent. Which I mean, to the average weekend warrior, that's that's pretty good. But like when you baseball is a game of inches and golf is a game of percentages, and uh, if you don't make those putts, those short putts that are gimmies, typically, um, it's going to kill you. Also, they probably need to keep in mind longer putts because aren't the greens fairly large on this course as well yeah so that's why i put in approach as kind of my model like who can stick it at least relatively close perfect i did not um get an opportunity to model this week but i did match up uh two or three of my favorite data points this week next week i'll make sure to build in a third and do some more more refined modeling i'm not as fancy as you this week yeah that's okay <laughs> you're, that's you're dressed fancier than i am i just wanted to rep the steelers because they made the playoffs so well we had picture day at work today so oh yeah <laughs> this is my picture day outfit Oh, yeah. Ta-da. I like it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so talking about the top guys, the top tier guys, 
There are, are um, some pretty pricey players this week. I actually was somewhat surprised at the pricing, but it's been a while since I've looked at Golf DFS. But the one that jumped out at me the most was Ludwig Aberg being the most expensive at 10.5k on DraftKings and he's not even projected to be the highest scorer and he's not in the top ownership projections or roster rostership projections so I was like that's really fascinating to me um I don't know if you've heard any news is it just because he's so trendy right now he's gonna come over to the PGA Tour from the DP World Tour. What do you think it is that's propelled him to the top spot this week? <clears throat> I think it's a little bit about recognition. Um, I, I, a little, He's been in the headlines as well as kind of like voicing his opinion about what's happening on the PGA Tour, live people. Um, he, had, he had some points to get across when John Rahm went over to the live tour. Um, I, I, think, I, I think Vegas calls it a sucker bet. <clears throat> so... Um, I, I think people will get sucked in to the name recognition and not necessarily look at what he can do. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he's, uh, a, you know, a super bad play. Right. I just, I just don't think he's going to be the, the guy that's going to get you over the hump. Right. I, I like Matt Fitzpatrick more than I like Aberg. If I'm going to pay in the tens of thousands, that would be my move, but, I actually went down a notch and chose Corey Connors 9.8K on DraftKings. And within that tier, the projections coming out maybe around, uh, where are we at? 78 points per game or for the first round at least. But mm -hmm. everybody's on board with that 22% of rosters are going to have Corey Connors on it this week. I just felt good. Like he came in 11th in 2022 tied for 12th in 2023. So I thought if I'm going to spend up, I like, I like that. It's a good, it's a good area to be in. Yeah. He's, he's got a good uh, approach. He's got good around the green skills recently. He hasn't been the best at putting. Um, he's lost some strokes. I would say less than half percentage of strokes. Um, he does well in moderate to windy conditions, which, I mean, you're on the coast of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it gets a little windy. Um, so, yeah. Say Hawaii again because you did it like the right way. Hawaii. <laughs> oh, the joy this show brings me. <laughs> Addiction. <laughs> Addiction. Who was your top tier pick? Um, I'm going to go with a guy that was priced at 7,600 last last week and is now one of the top tier people this week, and that is Stigal. Um, yeah. I, I think he, he projects out pretty well. Um, in my model, like I said, I had approach and then around the green and then putting. Um, he does all those things pretty well. Um, he does not do well in windy, but I mean, who does, uh, right. but his trend line is, uh, pretty on par. His around, he gains like two to three strokes around the green and his putting has been stellar. Um, so, and outside of the worldwide technology, his past three, um, events granted, we're going back to October and September. Um, but he's been in the top, top 20. Um, and two of those, he's placed in the top five. Um, so that, I think he's carrying a lot of, um, he's got a chip on his shoulder. He wants to prove everyone wrong. So <clears throat> I like it. I like it a lot. I was telling you before we went live, he was my first pick. I was the um, eighth pick of 10, and I picked Thigala first. So let's go, Thigs. Thigs. <laughs> Thigs and Keegs. I almost picked Keegs this week, but I did. No Keegs. Do you like Keegs? <laughs> uh, Keegan, I picked him last week, and he did not do so well. 
Um, yeah, I, think, I was nervous because he was cut last year. Yeah. Uh, he might be one of those people that just kind of takes some, take some time to kind of get in the swing of things. Um, so, yeah. Well, I don't want to spend 8K on getting in the swing of things when we can spend 7 point... Oh, just kidding. When we can spend 8.5 on Cam Davis. Good guy right there. <laughs> yeah, this is another one I was looking at um, kind of in that mid sweet spot of finishes over the last couple of years, tied for 27th, tied yeah. for 32nd. Um, so he's going to get you some fantasy points. We're looking at like 67 potential fantasy points for the first round. 8% rostered, not the lowest, definitely not the highest. So in a good, comfortable situation there for Cam Davis, 8.5K. That, that feels like a good move. Um, but there are several, I think, in that 7 mid sevens to mid eights that are just really stellar picks. So it's hard to even choose. Yeah. I think he's a good pick. I think he does well. He does particularly well at birdie fests or like low scoring um, type tournaments. He did well at the Zozo. Did he roll at Shriners? He did well at the Fortnite. Did well at FedEx St. Jude, Wyndham. I mean, all those were top 10, uh, top 15 finishes. I don't think he did well last week only because he's, to be honest, I bet he was just kind of fucking around. It's a no cut <laughs> tournament, trying some yeah. stuff out, right? Um, so, yeah, um, I think it's a good pick. <clears throat> did you find anybody in the eights that you liked? Yeah, you know, um, I was looking at the eights and I was like, well, who do I want? And there's a couple people in the eights that I kind of like. Um and really, I was like, ah, uh, eights. I could go with Matt Kuchar, but I was like, eh, he's in the sevens a little bit. Uh, I, to be honest, I like Adam Hadwin. He's in my model. Ooh, tell us about Adam Hadwin. Uh, so Adam Hadwin um, does pretty well at Brady Fest. He does you know, fairly okay at putting on Bermuda, which is what we have here. Um, he's trend lines up. Um, he's His approach hasn't been the best lately, but his putting has been pretty good. So while he's not getting the ball as close as he would like to the hole, he's been doing pretty well on making up for it on the on the putting, putting things. Um, he did okay at the century. I can't talk. Century, um, he did well at Shriners. Uh, Shriners was in October, but um, he looks to be in pretty good form, so I'm going to pick uh, Hadwin at eight. Had win, not had lose. Yeah, sometimes had lose does show up. <laughs> I think the sevens might be the sweetest spot for me. I won't go over all of them because I have a handful in that range. But I liked Adam Svensson, 7.7, .7. Andrew Putnam, 7.5. Both of them are at 13% roster ship. Both of them are looking at around 72 fantasy points projected. Both of them have finished fairly well one year or the other over the last two years at this event. But I'm going to talk about Matt Kuchar. <laughs> Mr. Kind Eyes. It never ends. The extraordinaire. Perfect around the greens. Approach wise, we love him. Yeah, he's projected for 67 fantasy points, nothing to sneeze at. And 12% of players seem to agree. Managers are like, let's do it at 7.8K. Maddie K tied for seventh twice in a row. I like that pick. Like I said, he's done well here. <clears throat> and he he's in that familiar territory of my next pick, which is Brendan Todd. Uh, Brendan Todd, the Todd father. Who's also at 12%. Um, they're both 
uh, usually good approach monsters. And uh, Brennan's been a little bit away from that lately, but uh, he also has a new caddy, so he could be feeling things out there. Um, but I think every, all the managers that have picked him at 12%, which is fairly high for Brendan Todd, um, seem to think that he's going to pull it out. And he is darts uh, when he gets his, his approach shot going. Um, it's between him and uh, Batia. Batia has been uh, up and coming ever since he's got the belly putter going. Um, he's been starting to make some putts. So, and he usually does pretty well at Birdie Fest. So. I like, um, we've had Birdie Fest. That's been in the vocabulary of the show. And now we have Approach Monsters. Approach. Add that to your repertoire, everyone. <laughs> Getting all the lingo out. <clears throat> I love it. Love. Okay. I'm going to talk about one last player, for me at least. Um, I'm going down to 6.9K. Um, that is going to be KH Lee. KH Lee, 2% roster ship. Uh, the next lowest one I have would be Cam Davis, which was 8% roster ship. So KH Lee, 2% roster ship, 6.9K. We're looking at around 59 fantasy points. I just liked how he kept appearing when I was changing up whatever screen I was looking at, different rankings, past performance, um projections he just kept popping up and i'm like all right fine fine cage mm -hmm. Lee, fine i'm gonna pick you i don't know why just one of those things that i do good intuition keeps showing up everywhere so i'm gonna pick him <laughs> i don't know i like it I do like you it. um yeah i do um i i think another person that does well that's on the solar field is david lipsky um Ooh. He only shows up at a birdie fest, and uh, that's about it. So, well, now I need to look up because uh, I wanted to look at my little course fit thingy, majiggy. Oh, yeah. I mean, you don't need distance. He's got a decent approach. We're great around the green. We meet just fine with putting. I feel comfortable with that KH Lee pick there and the sixes on DraftKings. That's great. And then you said Lipsky. You liked yep. Lipsky. What was what is his uh, salary this week? David Lipsky. Let me double check that guy. He is, I think, in the low sevens. Not bad. Like he meets everything. He's definitely short, but you don't need to be long, which we talked about. Good accuracy. Good approach. Mm, that's a little saucy. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. If uh, he's comfort food, you don't want him all the time. But uh, when you need something to start off the cold season of golf, Deb Lipsky can come around. <laughs> I am so entertained with this episode. I hope everybody else has been as well. Do you have anybody else, Adam, that you want to talk desperately about tonight? Um, you know, I, I've been summit slumming it a little bit and looking at some people in the sevens and sixes. Um, I'm taking some flyers on Patrick Rogers, uh, EVR, Eric Van Roon, um, and then, like I said, David Lipsky. Um, those are my flyers within the, the budget barrel of golfers. <clears throat> the budget barrel I actually took a look at and found that there are three golfers with very similar stats when you're looking at them on paper, and that's Nate Lashley, Chad Ramey, and Matthew Neesmith. And they are all 6,500 this week on DraftKings. Um, Matthew Neesmith did not play in this event last year. Chad Ramey tied for 54th, and Nate Lashley tied for 7th with Matt Kuchar last year. Um, but I found that to be like, wow, there's a big chunk in there. Um, and I think actually both Lashley and Neesmith are on my fantasy bench. So 
I'm excited to see what they do for the season because they are like those bottom of the barrel guys. But yeah, I also wanted Robbie Shelton, but then I pulled back on that. I don't think that's a good one at all. No Robbie Sheltons, please. Even if no. you only have six thousand. <laughs> no Robbie Shelton. There's other people. There's others out there. This is fun. This was fun. 20 minutes of fun. New vocabulary. Back in the swing of things. <laughs> oh, Adam. I like it. This is good. This is you so get much you fun. Your information. You're out the door. You're good. Out the door. Go use those to build your lineups and make some money. We'll keep our stats again this season like we did the season before. And, um, yeah, let's win. Let's have a great golf season. Everybody, tune in again next week. We are recording these on Tuesday evenings. They'll go live to you on Wednesdays. So like, subscribe, share. Tell us your picks on the Twitters. He's at Mr. Hallis. I'm at Kelly and Phoenix. And we will see you next week. Bye.